Check. Check. Okay. <laughs> Hello, Sam. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hello, everyone. Um, okay, my name's Samantha. I'm here with Eric. Um, just a little bit about Uncensored New York. Um, Uncensored New York is an art movement that was started um, a little over a year ago, originally as a response to the dehumanizing dehuma effects of cancel culture um, that me and my community were witness witnessing amongst friends and strangers. Um, and so throughout the year, I've been watching um, how it's perpetuated in the media and how it is destroying our society. Um, yeah, so that's a little bit about Uncensored. What about Radio Bonita? <laughs> this is part of that, right? Yeah, so um, Radio Bonita is now um, going to be um, streaming in New York at X Pizza, which is um, a pizza shop in the South Street Seaport um, on Mondays and Tuesdays. So anyways, uh, my name is Eric, and I, I primarily DJ, and I make music. I play guitar and cello, it's experimental, I collaborate with other bands, and I've been with Uncensored since, I guess, the inception of it, and been performing with bands and DJing for various events. So Sam and I are here today to talk about um, stuff. Do you want to name them, Johnny? Giovanni S. Hi, I'm John, I'm alcoholic. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay, so basically I wanted to um, have these conversations once a month about um, media, capitalism, um, and the bigger picture. So um, this is our this is our first show. So yeah, this is, this is like an experiment. Um, yeah. And we'll have, like, we can have open dialogue, too, if anybody yeah. else wants to chime in since you guys are here yeah. with us. So um, so basically what I've been um, focusing on is how media exploits hate for profit. So hysteria is clickbait that generates money for media companies who will turn a profit and continue investing in ways to control us. So, like, essentially people are being brainwashed um, to not have any sort of intellectual desire um, to read articles other than tabloids. And so not everyone, but just generally, like with there's mass media. There's a large emphasis on it, for sure. Yeah. Um, and so um, media's conditioning uh, creates a behavioral loop. So, and there was obviously like this intellectual understanding um, when they were um, creating these platforms um, to make it easily addicting. So um, there's the loop and like the usage was designed to create a dopamine release reward, attention, and addiction. So ultimately, money drives our decisions. Um, money money, and the, the validation like machine that's kind of been set up. Like I think people kind of acknowledge that there's algorithms that are fueling everything, and the, f the fear kind of will always, you know, it's like the, the cream rises to the top, well, like the negative and the most like uh, polarizing stuff will go to the top and it kind of creates, you know, uh, a feedback loop of fear or even just like, you know, silly 
benign, low effort content that's just kind of like what has become everything mostly yeah exactly so like media is like relying on hate to make money so they're going to feed it as much as possible on these platforms so that essentially we're doing free labor for them yeah as long as everybody's you know contributing like we fuel those machines we are we are the where the product, as like most people should know, is like s like with say Instagram, like without our input, it it ceases to function. So we knowingly uh, input our stuff and give our content up for the chance to become idolized uh, next to you know celebrities and other people that are in the industry that are you know deified and idolized and people they've kind of created this machine to get everybody to kind of uh input and chime in um yeah um i mean it's created kind of like uh it's created this very um you know again echo chamber of stuff because it's not really it's not really focused on the content as much as the platforms are focused on the views they're focused on ad revenue they're selling uh the data of uh, you know our data for to the clients to the advertisers and the content yeah, that gets viewed the most gets pushed forward yeah but more so with the hate and stuff or even like censorship like i was talking yesterday um was i talking to you on the phone yesterday or maybe it was johnny but about like censorship you yeah maybe you talk to johnny yeah, yeah, but it's, like, back in the day, like, censorship, like, meant something completely different than what it means now, I feel like. Well, I mean, people are, there's a lot of self-censorship, and when you talk about, you know, art and things, like, with so much emphasis on uh, displaying your life for everyone, art doesn't really get too much time to like marinate in privacy and 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 be introspective as much as it's mm -hmm. being like content is pushed out so heavily everyone is kind of under the gun to like show something at all times every day all day brand you no, know but even like with if you think about like censorship like in the 60s and the 70s like publishers like basically like publishers were pushing work by like Burroughs, Kathy Acker sure. like trying to put these books out um and basically like having to go to court because of obscenity laws to even try and get the work published you know so that i feel like is like censorship in that time but i feel like nowadays like we don't even get there like we don't even get to the part where like the publisher or the record label is pushing um mm. like a controversial thing because they just Never. don't even want to deal with the information repercussions tr information travels too fast like it's over it's instantaneous whereas before people could put stuff out and then deal with the repercussion of it like down yeah. the road or the controversy but now it just happens instantaneous and i also feel like the content is not what's controversial anymore like back in the days with like burroughs or kathy acker like the content was controversial sure but like nowadays it's like it's more so like the person being controversial yeah which i, I mean feel like is like what like new censorship is I don't know if that makes sense. This is just like something that I think about. Yeah. I, don't I know. mean, you're saying that the people today are s there's more self censorship. Yeah. There's more self censorship, but there's also like, I feel like people censorship in general just means something different. Well, back then, it's like censorship of ideas or, or like, you know, going against political things uh, that was always going to be censored, you know? Yeah. Um, or if something was tied to someone for some, uh, you know, uh, act of violence because they, you know, read, you know, a book or listened to a, a band or something and they were quick to, you know, attack it and, and deem it, you know, devilish or terrible or. Yeah. And then, I mean, I guess the other thing is like that nothing actually is censored because we have access to the Internet. So anything can actually be put sure. online right yeah but you can go on the dark web it's like thor or something that's like the dark web browser if you really want to look for some <laughs> <laughs> obscene stuff what's <laughs> going on on there you can you can you can find all kinds of crazy there's like 
there's like uh web browsers that go on to what's like known as like the the full internet the full like if you were looking to buy <laughs> maybe human ha like seriously it's it's you know we use browse we the n like in in not that I'm on Thor looking at shit that right. we know <laughs> about this I mean I'm a I'm a big fan of Aphex Twin and he once put out like he put out a bunch of shit on the f like the full web but you had to access it through like Thor or something which is like uh you know not a officially sanctioned web browser whereas we get you know Safari and Google primarily those those filter out all the other shit, you know, that, that, that again pushes things to the top. Whereas they're in the full internet, you can kind of, I guess, find literally anything. Mm. Like you can buy drugs, like, and have them mailed to you, or, mm -hmm. you know, you can find uh, other pro illegal type shit that you probably shouldn't be fucking with. But. Yeah. And I feel like also, like, back to using, like, the examples of. William Burroughs, like, where there was, like, a fight to push the content um, and, like, not being in fear of, like, going to court and, like, fighting the obscenity laws. Like, nowadays, it's more so, like, people don't, they're, like, scared about losing money almost. Like, it's, like, it, it comes back to, like, capitalism. Like, money yeah. is controlling. Money is creating the fear. Metrics. Yeah. Met metrics rule. Yeah. Metrics rule everything now. So, like, we... You know, everything is run through uh, algorithms and computers, and you can see what works and what doesn't work. So it's it's more or less like they just want media would like to stick to things that work, and taking risks involves p potentially losing money. And nobody wants to lose money; they just want it. They want to know that it's going to work from the get go. Like they know none of them are looking necessarily to be like cutting some, you know, trailing, uh, blazing a new trail necessarily. Because there's a lot of people, you know, everyone's got to make money, everyone's got to get paid, and at the end of the day, like, they're not, most of those companies that are established aren't, they're not like, hey, you know, I think I'm going to, like, chance losing, you know, my mansion in a pool and potentially having to lay off workers because we're going to do some risque thing. Like, they're not, they want it to come off as, like, artistic and creative, but only so much that they're not going to, like, you know, it's also, there's kind of a, I feel like there's a general understanding among most of the, like, media and companies when it comes to that stuff where, like, they kind of, they run everything anyways, what we see and what we consume. So as long as they're all kind of keeping a flat line on it and serving up the same thing, no one is going to challenge another media conglomerate, you know, with some racy shit because then that's going to shake up everything. And then... They well have not to play. Talking about racy shit, well, I'm just saying like yeah, yeah. pushing the boundaries, so to speak, artistically pushing the boundaries or something. Then it's like in music, uh, you know, they're not going to push. Uh, they want to push, you know, uh, the pop idols and stuff like that, pop icons, people that uh, you know partner in uh, with other big fashion labels or everything is like a brand deal now. So like. It that's a heavy focus on that. So they're not. It's not necessarily about the art as much as it's about the person and like the money and the success and stuff like that. It's not about, <coughs> you know, it's like who they're aligned with. The yeah, but like I'm not even like like fuck like mass media. Like what about just like I don't know the underground. That's or the like thing is the underground like can't the underground can't even like it can't the wall is so thick like to even it takes something like like what you're doing and. You know what X Pizza is doing and Radio Bonita for people to kind of like create something that is more grassroots and just here focusing here in s New York and Brooklyn and staying like focusing on the community here versus and then letting that grow and become something because that's how that's how that gets through. You know, yeah, more or less. And like the other thing that I will say is like I feel like I have a lot of these sorts of conversations with people where they're like on the same page, um, but they're still in fear, you know? Like yeah, everybody's everybody's worried about getting uh, ousted, <laughs> you know? Yeah. So I mean, it's important that people continue to show up to these, and yeah. If, if you know, if they're about the message and they want to contribute, you know, and you can't stop 
the negative people that will try to shut something down. But, you know, I don't know. There's I just think that the less the more it is in person, like it takes this type of like meeting up consistently and having events together and not focusing so much on because you guys all here have shown up and more people are coming and, you know, these are this is what makes it special to continue to do that, you know, uh, out of that, you know, out of that eye because it will grow and become its own thing, you know. Yeah, totally. I feel like just like talking about it and like creating like a bigger collective consciousness um, around these sorts of things. And if you p agree with um, how, I don't know, if like you have a certain opinion about these things, like not to be in fear or like, you know, try and change how Every people are. M everybody's worried more or less about being recorded and, you know, doxxed and here's your y we've seen what happens to people for stuff that's not even you know regular ass people like a dentist or something could get doxxed online and then it's our for saying something or having a viewpoint about something and then it's like their address is up and people are like you know uh breaking their windows at their practice and like going to their home or something you know it's it's people are very fearful Get a little, get a little closer. This is John. Little closer. Hi, Eric. We've Hi, spoken about this stuff a lot before. Long phone conversations about this type of shit. Um, yeah, I mean, uh, what what was the last thing that you said? I'm sorry. I'm People are afraid of being recorded, and and right. uh, you know, there, it's there's a mob out there that will you know take your name, and now that they can search you and find you anywhere, they can you know there's. People are there's more fear involved. Yeah, well, from experience, I think that the fear is just now more fuel for me to do what I want to do. You know. Yeah, and I mean then like kind of push back, and like I feel like people have to be a little bit more uh, confident within themselves to not let you Pe know most so of most of these people just kind of bring them down because it's I, I, um, unfortunately not a lot of people are like that. Sadly, you know, um, it's tough because you know people again have to so keep on living and surviving exactly. and like you know there's there is the fear that their whole life will get turned upside down that you're not going to be able to find work they're going to lose friends like there's a whole n you know narratives well that come up and and will keep them you know when, they when now they're maybe they're s they're safe and they're they're making uh you know money and and live in their life they'd rather stay you know uh stay blended in they don't want to they don't want to rock the boat so to speak mm -hmm. I just feel like that's a really big problem. Well, I think I don't think those people are very happy. I think that they they will crave stuff like this. They crave this environment, and they they're the ones that would want to support maybe un you know anonymously. But yeah, but that's bullshit. Like yeah. that's the thing. And the other the other thing that I want to bring up is like how like if we're talking about like venues or like record labels or like corporate magazines. Um, that like they won't I've seen in some situations where like they won't take a chance on things unless like they're able to profit from it so like if you're like have been through some shit and like you your name is googleable and like there's some shit on the internet about you like but like if you have like a humongous following it's like that venue will book you, like, because they're ultimately going to sell tickets. And I feel like that's, like, the biggest problem that I have with all of this is that, I mean, ultimately, like, we're being controlled by money. Like, yeah. that's the problem. It's like, I like, I enjoy comedy. I enjoy Louis C.K. I know that's controversial for some, but, like, they tried to cancel him. And we're successful, I guess, for a little bit, but, again, like, He's still able to perform and, and do his thing, even if he had to go back to starting out smaller and stuff like that. But um, he'd been, you know, he put in the work. I guess if he was if he was a younger man, uh, newer in the in the industry, I mean, he probably would have just got shut out completely. Well, didn't he? What did he do? He like jerked off in front of some girl. Yeah, that's what. And then like that was it. Like Basically, yeah, he that was that was his crime. That was his crime. Yeah. Um, 
but like I said, if he was a younger person just getting started out, like he might that might that um, would have closed the door potentially for good on him just because he didn't have such a, a <coughs> reputation. As people, you know, know him as being funny. I mean, again, that and that's I mean, I subjective. Like I'm to a people. fan of his too, you know. Yeah. But back to the venues thing, I think that you know, like uh, kind of uh, what S- Sam was saying with like the profit, like the venues making only they'll only book you if you have like a certain following. That even y- if you've been through something like you know, uh, w- like doxing. I don't really like to say cancel culture that much anymore, but like doxing, people will inevitably book you if you're able to fill the venue uh, and it of, of, of course it always comes down to money so like personally like i can't perform because they know that i won't bring you know over 120 people therefore somebody who three people that i know that i won't name and venues that i won't name because i'm not you know, of course i'm not gonna go after them i've been doing the same thing that they do um you know have well, profited off of these people, yeah, um, and they've gone through the same thing I've went through. But the fact that I don't bring, I'll only bring 70, 80 people, and they'll bring two hundred people. Obviously, is uh, you know, it's like what are you, what movement are you following? You're following the capitalist. Well, uncensored has done, you know, obviously with with you guys, you guys have had large turnouts and collaborated with other people. Um, other i'd say like designers and other artists and stuff like that and it's been successful but i think the most important thing is is kind of like to avoid the commercial it's better to go like diy i think new york is kind of we don't have that as much and that's kind of super important that's where all the kind of fun stuff is going to happen anyways Uh, and and the venues eventually will would obviously they'll pick up on that but in order to build that following and build that community it's like we continue to network with people that will host and and have more of a diy kind of yeah i mean even if venues don't pick up on it i think it's like that's fine too that's fine i actually prefer it you know because like if anything it's inspired me and other people that i know to like make better work yeah it's just been harder for diy stuff to kind of pop up you know uh with because they don't have money yeah, that's yeah. I mean, it takes it it takes everybody. I mean, if the community is willing to like chip in on an event, that's like helpful. And ultimately, you know, uh, art for the sake of art is kind of what I think you guys are trying to get back to instead of like s- just setting out to make it about the m- about money straightforward. You know, like it's about the message. It's about the art. It's if you're doing it for the money, like I think you're doing it for the wrong reason. You know, like it's nice to be appreciated, and that's that's obviously a bonus and a plus, but it shouldn't be the the main focus. And it it takes it does take. I mean, money, money is great, but it's not the main focus. No, exactly. But it and it takes money to do this shit too. You know, it takes it takes money to to set this up. It takes for X Pizza to have us here. You know, the is paying to have us to playing the bills and and you know and, and having this and being able to set this up like takes money but it's it's a you know it's a labor of love it's a pa- like passion project mostly you know because you have something to say and you don't if you wanted to take the easy route everybody kind of knows what the easy route is if you look at what media is you know pushing yeah sorry i didn't mean that like my goal was to make money not at all I no i didn't like insinuate that at all oh okay, cool, no no cool. no no i just meant that like what you're doing is in line with what new york and art in general needs is like it needs more DIY. It needs something to build upon. And you know, I had a friend who was a p- she was a painter, and she was constantly like down. She's talking down to herself because she was working at like a, a retail store, and she just didn't she she didn't feel like she was really doing it. But I'm like, you're you're doing it, and she's always like telling me how much she wants to be featured in like a gallery but i'm like you're what you're letting the gallery keep you out from like you feeling like an artist so i like had to kind of push her to go out i was like why don't you just do like you have paintings and you can do like wheat pastings like why don't you just start doing your art like 
you should be dr like I was trying to get her to be a little bit more like a graffiti artist to be honest because she's a, a great painter but I was like you should inject a little bit more uh, like street into what you're doing and just don't wait for anybody to give you permission because you can't be in a gallery as like, just get out at night and start doing shit and put stuff in front of people's faces I was like your art can be appreciated more when someone randomly is crossing it versus among a, j a fucking feed of like just garbage and ads and shit and then it's like oh look a fucking painting like whatever i was like you should put your work out in the world physically and get out you know and and fuck those galleries like they're you know it's if you wait for that like yeah you won't you're gonna, you're gonna feel like you're you put it on a pedestal and you're waiting to like be validated through a fucking gallery it's like don't don't do that like go go put a painting start we pasting and and draw and 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 just figure out ways to put your art out into the world you know it's better that way like that's the thing is like artists and people maybe are being a bit stifled because they they're trying to build heavily because because of venues and stuff want you to see you have a following or they want to see that you can provide results up front and that's like anything they they want to see that there's a guarantee instead of taking it taking a chance and and letting it be mysterious and letting them not know which you know mystery is kind of died these days yeah mystique is completely gone and exactly. it's like you know, Mystique is gone, and it's like, um, <coughs> if you have mis like, if you are a mysterious artist, they 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 want to know more, and that's always kind of drawn me to people like you know that I like in music. You yeah, know, it gets like you to it gets you to dream, and it gets you to ask questions. It gets it, you know, when I don't when I've seen uh, provoking thought provoking art, like I like to think about it and dwell on it. I like to let it like I like to think about. it. I don't want to necessarily you know spoil it or have to re you know read up an analysis on something sometimes it's better to kind of sit in and be introspective about what you yeah what you've and it's seen. not measured by the content anymore it's measured by how many of course how many people are following you or how many people are liking your work and i mean that's why most of the stuff is i mean i don't i think it's pretty terrible <laughs> <laughs> yeah i you know i i've told sam and you guys about this book by Jeremy Weissman, it's called the the Crowdsource Panopticon. But um, if you are interested in this book, it's really it's weird. It, it came out last year, and it's kind of it's been uh, a physical copy is kind of expensive, and I don't know I don't know like how I haven't really seen it out in the wild. If you look hard enough on the internet, you may be able to find a place to read it. And uh, it's not it's not super long. It's like 180 pages, but throughout it, it kind of it gets to a place where it it is this Jeremy Weissman is talking about how art and creativity and things will things be become more benign and more similar once you have introduced the 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 validation system of you know likes and clicks and hearts and shit like that and anything that is thought-provoking or different or, or just d truly different isn't going to be validated like that it's and it's going to be pushed down under under an algorithm of sorts like well it's, yeah it's always going to be pushed down and people are getting like dopamine hits in the wrong places too I yeah mean, most people are getting their dopamine hits by all of this like like she said before like hate content that it's just like let's like this and like it, it does give you like a, an emotional reaction you do get a dopamine hit from it because i've i've participated not in hate but i've participated in liking something that's for sure really negative and then like days later or weeks later i came back and i was like wow like i got like an anxiety <laughs> and like i got like rage and i had like you know i had like something going on in my head when i did that and i realized like wow this is toxic it's so fucking bad yeah um, i think and I it's just like people love to feel that so if, if they see something that's like gonna feed their fire like they'll just fucking people keep liking shit over and over again you know and that's just like profiting from hate you know and like that's like why i'm off instagram it's just because it's just so full of like so much virtue signaling and people being so great you know it's like look at me how i gave two thousand dollars to m this foundation like no you're you know i'm pretty sure you're a piece of shit but you know it's like <laughs> yeah i mean it's um i think that these these platforms are innately like started as good things and the people behind them ha like there there's there is good in it but they're tools that are being like 
they're being misused against us. And it's also not good because it's training our youth to kind of, uh, you know, follow suit. They don't know any better. And, you know, I'm not, I'm not saying, like, do without it. It's just they're being used against us in, in poor ways. But they're good tools if, if things could be fixed and changed a bit more and if, if the company's, um, you know, values were to change and the way that, you know, they are designing them to be addictive and to, to kind of, you know, they're, they're designed around negative uh, things. Not th and it's not that they're supposed to be evil or bad. It's just having, like, a, a poor effect on, like, mental health and art obviously and and just like the you know the children and the people of tomorrow it's like i don't necessarily think they need more time to like figure out who they are instead of being you know uh, like domesticated and trained through those platforms i don't think that's a good place for them to like they're basically they're learning what is valid and what is quote unquote cool and and looking for that validation uh through following others that are that have that validation, you know, they're going to, and it's only going to create sameness. Yeah, you know? we're being manipulated by social media. Yeah, and it's tough much. because, and it's tough because there's a lot of pressure from, again, like you said, the venues and people that are would, you know, put out uh, books or music and stuff like that, or or they are interested. There's there's profit involved and when it's when it's you know they they want the guarantee so like that again it's it's kind of you know uh it, it everything has to grow everything has to make more and grow and be bigger and better and and it's that's kind of yeah there's also like a lot of like everybody's a doctor now online mm -hmm. like it's like uh <laughs> self-help yeah you know there's all like all these ch kids now that are bulimic because like some s page says that like oh these are the five signs that you're bulimic you know, and like my my cousin's like friends in high school, he's like, you know, they're like 14, 15 year old girls. Uh, I must be bulimic. It's like, and it's pretty. Oh, no, go ahead. Go no, 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 take it. Take it. No. Yeah, there's. I mean, and you like. And I think that's pretty terrifying. You know, like that's something that they're. You know, uh, it's like mass self help pages. You know what I mean? Like. No, I just wanted to say that I think that, like, advertisement and the way that, like, this is, like, a whole other conversation, the way that bodies are put on the Internet and in advertisement is affecting younger girls, like, to actually be, like, anorexic and bulimic. Like, that's a, that's a thing. Yeah, okay. that's all I'm just trying to say. Yeah, yeah, I get what you're saying. I, I completely agree, but I'm talking more about, like, pages that are, like, how to know you're bulimic. You know, you've seen those. Have you seen these on, on Instagram? Um, and it's like a, you know, it's like a list. Yeah, I mean, anybody anybody can th can say. And it convinces them, like, oh, I well, if you have these five things, then, like, you must be. I know you do, like, the ADHD one. Yeah. ADHD. I just know the bulimic one from, uh, from like. Yeah, personal, personal, personal family experience. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So I'm not, it, it could be ADHD, it could be bulimia, it could be, you know, a brain tumor. Like, <laughs> it doesn't, you know, still convincing the person because they're reading it that, you know, they're being manipulated by social media for reading those things. You yeah, know? and it's I don't think it's like, I don't think that the person that's doing it is malicious. I think they're generally trying to be helpful and, and, and do something kind, but at the same time, they're, they maybe don't realize that, Again, there are young people out there that that exactly. see this stuff, and they're highly, um, easily influenced. Uh, exactly. By well that's what my they point. See. Yeah, yeah, that's, and that's, that's dangerous. That's, it's dangerous because it's like you know you have four, thirteen, fourteen year old kids now that like, you know, are, are convinced that they're they have all these ailments that they maybe do have, but you know who knows, you know. And like yeah, I mean they're busy trying to figure out like they're trying to figure out like who they are and in that quest it's like they you know uh, there's so much media in general is just like it's like a floodgate you know i, I th think most people start the morning off with their phone in their hand and it's kind of like a bombardment of just notifications and information and it's easy to just you know it, it takes two seconds like it takes like it's, it's instantaneous that you're in that 
bubble in in you know uh you're just you go down the rabbit hole every everybody goes down the rabbit hole you know i think yeah you know, we've we uh, we've all been down the rabbit hole, and uh, you know, I don't think you necessarily come out the other end feeling like great. I think you come through as like a time suck, and then you're like you're a zombie. You know? Yeah, you know, it, it's it's the whole thing. There's uh, again, there's a lot of a lot of context switching, and and it, it doesn't flow. Uh, it's it's not a fluid thing. Uh, it's just it jumps around a lot, and you I don't know that your brain has. I don't know that your brain can process so many different context switches you know that quickly where you just come out being like what the fuck did i just see and what i watch you know whether it's self-help or you know an advertisement or whatever totally yeah does anyone have anything they want to say yeah join in it's it's our f this is the first one that we were doing so like seriously like if anybody wants to talk like please Dunbar's number? Have you ever heard of the concept? Anybody? I've heard Anybody? about it, but I don't know what so it means. It's just something that came to mind. Uh, basically, somebody was doing research, and the concept being that <coughs> over the course of human history, before civilization, uh, when, and it's not an exact number, it's an estimate, when a tribe or whatever got to around 150, then the tribe would match, or if it exceeded that average, it would split. <coughs> because the concept being that once you get to that number, it's no longer, the average uh, human mind is no longer able to know everybody and know how everybody knows everybody. <coughs> and to me, that's sort of, that's still built into our genes and our DNA, but we live in a world now of, you know, we're coming on eight billion if we haven't hit it yet. So how do you have a world <coughs> the way, you know, the way you guys are looking for it in a society so large, you know? Is it workable? That's my only question that I was thinking based on what you guys said. Yeah, totally, like, what's the solution, for sure. I was thinking about this a lot, um, like, you know, we talk about this stuff all the time, um, and really is like, how do we move forward? And I think, like, one of the only solutions I know is just, like, supporting your community, like, buying your friends magazines, buying your friends music, like putting out your own music and just like supporting community is like the only back on back on the the Dunbar number um the it's interesting actually before like I think it was like 2010 or something like there was another social media platform that I was using with my friends it was called Path and that was the cap was 150 because they said it's impossible to like that is that is the mo most amount of uh, social relationships that you can sustain, like physically possible is 150 people. Before, like if you go above that, that's when you start losing friends and people fall off. But that means like you've got to see one of those 150. It takes you like you know five months or something to get. Th that's hanging out with someone every every single day, you know, uh, and. They that's that was a cool like platform originally because it was more like a really stripped down journal, almost like uh, it was like a Facebook, but it was very minimal and stripped down, and it was only accessible on your phone. It wasn't meant to be used on the computer, and it was just like little bits of information. Like you could you didn't even have to follow anybody on it. You could just kind of set up this thing where you uh, like tag a song or take a photo or whatever. It was very very private and like kind of like diary thing. But they uh, succumbed to the pressure of of other platforms and had to r had to release the cap and and then eventually like they they yeah, eventually they unfortunately it falls apart yeah yeah eventually they they had to you know it got shut down i think it grew the most actually like in thailand or overseas but eventually they had to shut it down and now yeah now it doesn't exist anymore but the 150 thing is there is truth in that and you know community again comes from its physical people like you know, I I think that, you know, my friends and stuff, the people that I meet, like, they're not going to get to know me through the Internet. They're going to get to know me by hanging out with me and spending time with me. Yeah, that's a big, I think that's a big part of, it's like, it's everything. uncensored, too. It's, like, for, you know, just hanging out in person. But also, like, we don't, 
from our experiences, like having events and stuff, we don't exclude like other places. Like you can't come in because you know you said this or you did this. It's like doesn't matter. If people who uh, support that kind of culture, like that came after my friends or me or anybody, sure. if they want to come to an event, like come. Yeah, they're you welcome. Know? It's like because I would, I w- why am I going to be the same way? You know what I mean? No, it's yeah. like that. That that's what's in you know. Then that's like kind of what we're trying to build. It's like you know, let's have a conversation here. Like. Yeah, it's not the event. It's like, yeah, it's not confrontational. Like anybody that wants to come is always welcome to come. Uh, Even if you know, like X, Y, and Z, like I don't know, you know, like yeah, somebody doesn't agree with their politics, or you know, they support uh, doxing culture. You know, it's like come, who cares? You know what I mean? If you want to come, I mean, I'm sure. And there, and I'm sure, (laughs) you know, I'm sure they would be welcome to the stage to say their piece if they really felt they needed to. They're welcome to. You know, to say what they got to say or something. I mean, I, I don't think that's going to happen. But <laughs> I don't know. I mean, I don't I think it changes. I don't think it changes, th- like, who shows up and who, like, everybody, kn- like, we all know why we come but and you know, why we're there. But, you know, crazy shit, more crazy shit has happened, so you never <laughs> fucking know, you know. Yeah. We also went through a pandemic that killed, like, half the country. So. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, we got to wrap it up. So, uh, does anybody have any more questions or are we... Uh, this is the first one, so it's a little scatterbrained, but I think we're we're good. Are we good? Sorry if this was negative. No, I don't think. Do you think it was? I don't think it was. I don't know. There's there's hope. This is this is there's there. This is a good thing. This is why we're here. I like kept saying, you know, and everybody that's here supporting, like we thank you guys, and and you know we're gonna do more of this stuff, um, especially here, and um, you know if you guys. Sign up with Uncensored on the, I think, on email list, and you can obviously talk to Sam or or me or Johnny. Um, you know, y- there's there's more stuff to come, and you know, or get someone's number or email. I don't know, whatever you prefer, Messenger Pigeon, something, and you know, we'll stay in touch. Cool. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Thank you. Thank you, guys.
Je regarde passer les trains Express au départ pour Verdun L'hypnose moderne et tourdine aux jubilations secrètes Oh, la nuit porte bien conseil des ministres et plénitude des exercices Remaniement, manigance, mausolée des sourires Rien de nouveau à l'ordre du jour Demandez le programme, le robot et l'aboutissement du cerveau occidental Regarde passer les trains Express au départ pour Verdun Et vous, Paris, Madrid, Tanger, Gênes, Cordoue, West Hollywood Les avions ne permettent pas le voyage Les rails, même sans fin, ne permettent pas le voyage ne permettent pas le voyage L'autostop même de l'Angleterre La Nouvelle Orléans ne permet pas le voyage Les bus Greyhound torpillent l'infini Mais ne permettent pas le voyage Je regarde passer les trains Express au départ pour Verdun Qui dira la rénovation des lignes Je ne suis plus que les voix qui me guident Périphérique, intérieure, comprise Mathématiques amoureuses Faites d'équations à bien des inconnus Faites d'équations à bien des inconnus pendant que contre un peu d'or, Disneyland achète le silence des dormeurs. Nous harpe comme des palangres pélagiques, recouvre nos voix sourdes de pelletées arides. Je regarde passer. Express au départ pour Verdun Et on l'a dans le baba Ah, ah si l'on pouvait retrouver les 40 voleurs Soutien, soutien, soutien Soutien aux braqueurs de Nice et d'ailleurs aux bandits qui détroussaient et assassinaient les voyageurs Soutien aux brigands qui s'en prenaient aux bêtes de somme et d'addition Soutien aux hommes de barbares qui contrecarrent les plans du complot des clopantes Souvenir de la souveraine France Je vous salue qui tirer sur tout ce qui ne bouge pas. Des jours heureux, le bout de revolver encore chaud. Suprématie du combat, même singulier. Des raisons tordues et de la démesure. Car à force de s'en rapprocher, je me suis brûlé au creuset des possibles. Je finirai pendu à ma corde sensible. Je regarde passer les trains express au départ pour Regarde passer les trains 
Express au départ pour Verdun. Mise à feu et à sang. On ne s'arrête pas en marche. On m'avait dit que le monde avait de beaux paysages, mais je l'ai vu de nuit et la rue de la soif cristallise mes envies. Alors, allez, on y va. Cent ans de solitude, jouer du piano ivre comme un instrument à percussion jusqu'à ce que les doigts saignent un peu. Toujours les temporalités particulières de la nuit. Je regarde passer les trains express au départ pour Berlin.